What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Vanguard Live. Got a lot of good stuff to talk about today. Probably going to keep the live stream a little bit shorter than usual, though, because my co-host and dear friend Zach is afflicted with the corona, the novel coronavirus. It finally caught up with you, bro. Bro, I swear to God that last night when I was like shivering as, as if my like life depended on it and I was in a pool of my own sweat and coughing and not being able to swallow... I really wish I would have taken the uh, most recent jab. Really do. Really kind of reject it, re regretting that one where I was like, I already got a couple of them. Like, uh, that would be all right. I never got COVID when I was taking the vaccine. So I know that's going to piss off everybody on YouTube. But, ah, <laughs> uh, man, last night when I was up in agony, I was like, you stupid mm -hmm. fuck. You could have gone to Walgreens eight weeks ago and never would have had this problem. <laughs> Dr. Fauci is just off camera holding a gun to Zach's head. He's like, you better, you better. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I had, I got COVID when I was in New Orleans actually, like a few months ago. I thought that I was like, of course, as soon as I leave Kansas City and come to fucking New Orleans, I got COVID. Um, so I kind of figured that Kansas Didn't City. New Orleans have like a lot of COVID? Yeah, dude. It was like a fucking hotbed of the virus. Um, yeah, so it's it was... so warm and wet down there. I don't know if that makes any fucking difference, but I was like, Something's yeah. got to be doing that. And it's just like the kind of city where people just don't give a fuck about things like social distancing and, and all that kind of stuff, wearing masks. I mean, the whole South is kind of like that, but especially New Orleans. Anyway, it's a party. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, you feel better soon, bro. It is not. Fun. I should be better by tomorrow. This is this is the best I've felt in the last like 36 hours. So I'm feeling I'm feeling on the upswing. Um, But yeah. That's good to hear, bro. Yeah, in my experience, it lasted about 48 hours, and then it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, shout out to Fuzzy Slippers. Shout out to you, Tony D. What's up, bro? Feel better soon. Zach, much love to West. Yeah, shout out to you, Tony, and super excited to hear Chat's thought on this new news regarding the Dr. West campaign, because, um, whoo, got a lot of good spicy drama to go over uh, as far as all of that goes and i'm genuinely interested in your guys opinion I, I feel a little bit torn myself uh but i'm really interested in what you guys uh think yeah we've got a lot to dive into shout out to you for the first super chat of the live stream tony and shout out to you kelly as well for that tribute to salvador Allende and the people of chile on this tragic today uh 50 year anniversary of the uh you know u.s backed coup um you know that deposed salvador Ayande and uh you know installed the Pinochet regime um so yeah uh, definitely want to remember that uh, it often gets overshadowed because 9-11 obviously 2001 was uh you know the Twin Towers fell that was a pretty notable day in our life um the the, the more modern 9-11 obviously this is also yeah in, incredibly important so shout out to you Kelly for bringing that up but yeah you're right Zach it does usually get overshadowed um by 9-11 which today is the anniversary of i feel like we're at the point now i feel like when we were in like middle school high school zach it really seemed like the nation really came together to remember 9-11 and it was like i couldn't go anywhere without seeing shit about 9-11 everywhere I, I feel like this year i kind of just you know went online and saw people posting memes like i feel like we're kind of at that point with 9-11 where it's kind of like it's just a meme now yeah absolutely um, and people are, I mean, look, they tried so hard to make that like a never forget always. I mean, it's 22 years ago. Uh, we went and destroyed a bunch of countries in the Middle East after that happened. Uh, it's kind of hard to say, oh, well, look at what happened to us. It's like, yeah, we went and destroyed a couple fucking countries after that, uh, you know, in a barbaric fashion. So I think a lot of people who can look at that objectively and be like, wait, none of the dudes on those planes were from Iraq or Afghanistan. And you're like, no, none of them. Where were they from? Most of them were from Saudi Arabia. It's like, oh. You mean the country we're still fucking sent, uh, selling weapons to all the time and are completely cucked for? 
uh, great. Yeah, that really makes me feel like we've taken this seriously. It's, it's all bullshit, right? Um, you know, it's J- Dick Cheney's excuse to go nation build in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. But anyway, as Gavin reminds us, we do have to shout out the patrons at the beginning and end of every live stream. Um, you lovely fuckers that keep the lights on here for us and keep us coming at you through sickness and in hell. Yeah, shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for the support on Patreon. That link is in the description if you want to hit it up. really helps out. Um, and you can get your own name up there on the shout out screen. But yeah, thank you guys so much for making what we do possible, for kicking us a couple bunks, bucks every month. Really do appreciate that. Um, like I said, the link is in the description. Hit it up if you want to. Um, but yeah, I guess we can dive right into the topic du jour, the main story. This one really caught me kind of, uh, it kind of caught me off guard. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. And a lot of people have a lot of thoughts about this news. So let's get right into it. Certainly a controversial decision from Dr. Cornell West. I am so very blessed to have my dear brother, Peter Dow as my campaign manager. I welcome him to our campaign and movement. We will work together for truth and justice. And Peter Dow is one of these guys where it's like, like no matter what, it's like he's, we always have to keep talking about Peter Dow. I remember like back in 2016 and shit, people talking about Peter Dow. Um, There was uh, our good friend, Pat, the burner had a parody account called Peter douche, which actually got like banned uh, by Twitter for like false impersonation which was totally ridiculous but the reason why pat was doing that parody account was because at the time peter dow was like like the number one hillary clinton shit lib his whole you know point on twitter was just talking shit on bernie's and op yeah bernie's and op aren't bernie bros sexist you know all bernie sanders supporters care about is preventing the first female nominee from becoming president. Yeah, he was the worst of the worst, right? Um, and that's why so many people hated him on the left. He was widely mocked. Uh, but then he kind of had like a, a total ideological 180, much like that other guy. This moment. Uh, yeah, it's come to Jesus moment. Much like that other dude, Ryan Knight, who now is like a huge like third party fanboy kind of guy. You know, he also started out as a shit lib and then just like overnight changed like all of his opinions seemingly. Um and, you know, Peter Dow, to his credit, has been going hard against the duopoly. He has, you know, see, he seemingly is, I, I believe that he's had a genuine change of heart, right? You can say that, you know, you, you don't trust him because of the fact that he used to work for the establishment. But I, but I think that he genuinely has had a change of heart and that he genuinely now supports progressive candidates and supports a progressive message. He, him, along with his uh, wife, uh, have supported and advised several congressional candidates running as progressives. Obviously, Peter Dow also was Marion Williamson's first campaign manager before he left that campaign. It's still kind of unclear exactly why he left the Marianne campaign. It was very messy. There was a lot of you know different people theorizing about what exactly went down, whether he decided to leave or you know he was fired or like it, it, it was never really clear. Ultimately, he eventually put out a statement saying that he was leaving the Marianne campaign due to family issues, like you know his parents going through some sort of a medical or health issue. Um, so I guess I'd, I'd wager that wasn't necessarily the only thing going on, given the fact that he's just now come out to take a new uh, campaign manager position. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure the excuse about his parents was total bullshit. Um, I mean, that's just purely my speculation, but I, I don't think that was really why he left the Marianne campaign. Um, but now he's back and he is joining the Cornell West campaign. And like I said, I mean, I understand why people are skeptical about Peter Dow because of what I mentioned, the fact that this guy was like the number one antagonist of Bernie supporters on Twitter for four years. Um, And he was just doing DNC propaganda like overtime during that time period. He also, you know, has a long history. I feel like if Brooklyn dad defiant came out as a Bernie bro or became the fucking Cornell West Kim and and not in hundred percent like that, because Peter Dow actually does have like political experience that we'll get into uh, that may be beneficial to Cornell West campaign. But yeah, I mean, as far as like Twitter personalities go, you could not find a bigger, deeper Hillary Clinton stand than Peter Dow. Right, right. And the dude literally worked on the John Kerry campaign as well as the Hillary Clinton campaign. He was a huge blogger back in the 2000s, a huge, like, you know, liberal blogger. Um, so it's very interesting how he's made this transition into this sort of like radical Green Party leftist. Um, 
And again, I understand why certain people are a little bit sus about him, given the reasons that we've listed off. Um, but I think some of the responses to this have just been unhinged, right? Like, I understand having a criticism of the way Cornell is running his campaign. I I understand being like, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily have chosen Peter Dow myself. Um, but I do think that a lot of people are overreacting to this. And especially after that Jimmy Dore interview where, you know, Jimmy got really rude and was behaving in a totally disrespectful and out of pocket way uh, to Cornell West. It seems like in the wake of that, now a lot of the Jimmy Dore sycophant channels and a lot of the Jimmy Dore simps, people on the, you know, Jimmy Dore left, if you want to call it that even anymore. Um, it seems like now because of the fact that Jimmy and Cornell are no longer best of friends, they're kind of using this as an excuse to just totally abandon the Cornell West movement. That's kind of what I read that as. And we're going to take a look at some examples. You guys in chat can tell me if you think I'm full of shit, uh, but it certainly seems like a lot of people are overreacting to this announcement about Peter Dow again, and, and kind of just using it to basically throw Cornell West, West under the bus entirely. Oh, a hundred percent. Look, let's, let's be clear here. These were the people that were keeping their mouths fucking shut. If not celebrating the decision to have Nick Branagh, orchestrate the fucking campaign launch for Cornell West, right? Or a party that didn't even fucking exist, uh, you know, anywhere besides paper and Twitter, right? They had no ballot access. They had no infrastructure. They had none of that. And so for all those people to kind of turn a blind eye and now be like, well, I'm just trying to call balls and strikes over here at the Cornell West campaign. And it's like, okay, whatever. Here's, here's the position that I took when it came to Peter Dow as Marianne Williamson's campaign manager. I think it's pretty much shakes out the same way. You need somebody that knows how campaigns are run. You need somebody that understands how to, you know, get the ball rolling, get ballot access, get on, you know, TV, get media attention, uh, you know, and, and start building a grassroots team that's going to be able to, you know, help you gain momentum throughout the general election process. So I think that in that capacity, Peter Dow might actually be really lit. I think he might know the ins and outs of the swamp of Washington and the whole electoral process really well. And I could see Cornell West saying, OK, well, I already under I already have my own moral compass. Right. I am not going to be moved to the left or the right or in any direction by my campaign manager. My campaign manager is employed by me. And of course, he has a close relationship to Jill Stein and other members of the Green Party, as well as, you know, countless other lifelong progressive activists. So to be worried that like Peter Dow is going to come in here and start like changing Cornell West's position on things. And he's going to somehow become like a fucking democratic stooge. And the other thing is, is people are like, Peter Dow is an op. And I'm like, you guys are so fucking stupid. There is no money in tanking the green party. The green party is not going to get to fucking any meaningful, like I, people are going to be like, Oh, they're really worried about Cornell West. And that's why they had Peter Dow in, infiltrate him. Like what? Like, like, I just want everybody to use their brain a little bit because people throw out their brain a second that, like, you know, uh, their, like, heart comes into it, right? And it's just, like, obviously Peter Dow made a lot of enemies during his 2016 era and before then, right? Uh, as you mentioned, Pat called him Peter Douche, and it was, like, pretty earned, right? Um, but I think at the end of the day, <coughs> you have to trust the moral conviction of a guy like Cornell West to be able to stand strong and to, you know, have his own positions. And you also have to accept the fact that Peter Dow in addition to apparently being a keyboardist on Miles Davis track, which is really cool, um, also has experience, um, you know, in the in the swamp and in the you know race to become president. Which again, he maybe failed both times with John Kerry and Hillary Clinton, but you still gain a lot of knowledge through it. Yeah, maybe that's why Cornell picked him, being the jazz enthusiast that he is. He was like, I really was a fan of your feature on that Miles Davis track. I don't understand why yeah, people are I so... Yeah, I had actually no idea about this with Peter Me Dow. Uh, you know, he's been on Janet Jackson and Mariah Carey and Diana Ross tracks. Yeah. I knew he was a musician. I didn't know that his work had, a, a, like, you know, appeared in such high-profile music. Anyway, um, yeah, like I said, interesting, interesting announcement. I do agree with you. As we said at the time when Marianne hired Peter Dow, I think that it is, you know, despite the fact that I understand why people are sus about Peter Dow, I've always said that when lefties are running uh, campaigns specifically for president, sometimes you do need to surround yourself not with the most pure hearted activists in the entire world, but sometimes you need to surround yourself with people that can get the job done. People that really know what they're doing, people that have some experience, people that actually know the establishment and can, you know, weaponize their knowledge of it and their understanding of it against the establishment. 
um, this is important, right? This is important stuff. And Peter Dow certainly does know the machine from the inside out. Like I said, he literally worked on John Kerry campaign, Hillary Clinton campaign. He's very well acquainted with that whole world. So I do think that's important. And again, I do think it's a mistake that you see sometimes progressives and liberal candidates making where they, you know, just surround themselves with the most, you know, pure hearted activist types in the world. Good people, really, really good hearted activists, but not necessarily experienced campaign operatives. Right. They're kind of noobs. Um, and, and that can seem good from a leftist perspective because you're like, I, I wouldn't want to surround myself with anyone who's not concerned with anything other than the most pure motive possible. But Sometimes that does get in the way of like running a winning campaign or even a remotely successful campaign, uh, because if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, it doesn't matter how good your intentions are. You can have the best intentions in the world, but if you literally are out of your depth and, and don't know what you're doing because of a lack of experience, then again, all those intentions cease to matter. It becomes irrelevant. So again, I, I actually, uh, you know, maybe some people would disagree with me on the left, but I would rather... Uh, can't a lefty campaign hire an experienced person that's not necessarily, you know, the most pure activist ever versus a super pure left wing activist who has no experience winning? Can we talk about the graphic doing. design is my passion energy that's coming off of this fucking press release, though? Lynn Stacks correctly <laughs> pointed out that it looks like the SpongeBob font. Oof. True. That is true. Oh my God. <laughs> but anyway. Oh my God. Um, we got some interesting responses to this. Also, uh, another thing which uh, really, really triggered a lot of the Jimmy Dore left, a lot of the you know folks like the crew over at RBN, Dr. West posted this. Oh, yeah, where he they said, can hang out with their favorite Republican, Nico House, and talk about how just <laughs> nobody on the left understands how politics work. Yeah, exactly. They have on a literal Ron DeSantis voter nico house to lecture everyone else about how we're not really leftists or something anyway uh tim black i salute my dear brother tim black who once referred to zach and i as those columbine looking mofos that was that was hey tim we can black, take right? a good burn that was a good <laughs> oh yeah that was a that was a high quality burn for sure I i've laughing. got the beanie on today and everything you know <laughs> that's my aesthetic columbine looking motherfucker <laughs> anyway uh you know we haven't always agreed with tim black in the past but i definitely agreed with this video he did jimmy Dore betrays cornell west pandering to trump fans that's a video tim black did responding to that interview that we also responded to and dr west's wife actually tweeted this out saying thank you brother tim for your courage and truth telling and then dr west also quote tweeted that and said i salute you my dear brother tim for your rare courage basically signing off on everything that tim black said about jimmy door here in this clip and you know that that's a that's a pretty big development because if you guys remember jimmy and uh cornell have been pretty tight up until pretty recently uh, uh cornell west has even defended jimmy door uh, on shows like bad faith i remember he literally defended jimmy like like six months ago or something and i thought that was stupid at the time because i you know have thought it's pretty obvious the the true nature of jimmy door being the right wing grifter that he is um but you know it's it's taken cornell a little bit longer to get there and now it seems like he is officially there because i don't think he would have quote tweeted tim black's anti jimmy door video if he didn't agree with the sentiment expressed in it so this also pissed off a lot of the door fans a lot of the rbn crew and those kind of people yeah shout out to uh cornell west wife uh anita is that is that is that pronounced anahita or anita i'm not sure but either way shout out to you for uh, being real and having your husband back here uh she's been taking to twitter a lot, actually, I'd seen after that Jimmy Dore exchange. I do not think she was fucking happy with how uh, he spoke to her husband during that exchange. I wasn't happy with how he spoke to her husband in that exchange at all. Um, but yeah, I always love it when you see spouses come out here and be like, fuck you. Like, no, this is like, you know, I like that shit. Totally, totally. Um, so yeah, this pissed off a lot of folks, for sure. For sure. Um, a lot of people pissed off about that. And it Let's was crazy. Back. Did you see his uh, response uh, himself he gave on uh, Status Quo with Jordan Cheriton? Uh, I, I, I think it's safe to say that the bridge has been burned with Cornell West and uh, uh, Jimmy Doran. Fucking thank God. It's about time. Uh, shout out to our good homie uh, Jordan Cheriton for having Cornell West on his show to talk about this. And, you know, 
uh, kind of ask him about what he described as a contentious interview, I would say it was like a scolding, right? It was like, it, it, it was weird. And, and the way that Cordell West articulates it here, I think, you know, obviously does a great job of, at, at conveying exactly why it was unacceptable to him. Um, but I also just think that there, there's a, there's a, the further thing that you could say, which is that if you're a white guy with a multi-million dollar home, you probably shouldn't talk to a, a, a black liberation theologian uh, about how you, sh- you really just need to put down the white supremacy stuff and, and start looking out for poor white folks in the South. It's like, um, no, bro, you don't want to know what those poor white folks in the South have thought about me my whole fucking life. Why would I ever put them uh, fucking ahead of the liberation of, uh, of, of this entire group of people that he's advocated for his whole life? Now, we know, I mean, Brother Jimmy's anti-racist in his sensibilities and so forth. There's no I doubt about that. that. He's Dr. been very helpful to a whole host of black folk. I didn't, as you could tell, I didn't like his attitude at all. I didn't like his tone uh, over time. We started with a certain respect, but it tended to uh, uh, decline after that. And I don't have any any patience for the most folk. The folk who just kind of pontificate to tell you I'm the coach, I'm the advisor, this is what you ought to do. Who's advising you? Well, I think for myself, but I shouldn't have to say that because you think for yourself. Ba 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 ba. But I, I use the Watson example as an extreme example because we know white supremacy cuts so deep that you have a choice of either conforming or hitting it head on with your class politics. You don't give up on class just because you're talking about white supremacy. And if you reduce talk about white supremacy or male supremacy or transphobia or homophobia just to identity politics, then you're missing the point. Identity politics is a neoliberal project that's a class war against poor and working people. But if you have a class informed, class written politics that hits white supremacy head on, male supremacy head on, that's not narrow identity politics. That's what it is to be a decent and moral person concerned about structures of domination. And white supremacy deeply overlaps with forms of patriarchy and forms of capitalist exploitation of workers and so forth. But it also has its own relative autonomy, too. And so when he says, well, you know, you can't uh, you got to talk only about economic issues. That's why Bernie took off. And that's the only way you're going to take off. And then in the end, you say, I'm a loser. I said, well, OK, but you're going too far at that point. Nah, wait, wait, wait. Nah. I, I know we're supposed to be on the same side here, but if you can talk about Tucker Parker, if you can talk about Brother Tucker and Tucker when he talks about George Floyd, first thing he talks about is his record. Well, what about the suffering, brother? What about the police committing this vicious lynching and crime? So Tucker might have some populist dimensions. Wonderful. Love Tucker. Been to Africa with him. But if he was going to look at these Talking. various cases, same would be true with trans. Did you know about that, Gavin? This was the this was potentially the most shocking reveal is that Cornell West went to Africa with Tucker Carlson. Bro, this ain't what I want to hear from a third part or a, a Green Party candidate. But I hope you guys did good work together. Yeah. Why the fuck? I don't know what the like context for that was. I don't know if they literally went together or if they just happened to be on the same trip. I'm going like, to tell I- myself that. Yeah. <laughs> love Tucker. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm like, and I don't love Tucker. I, I, I could have no less love for Tucker than yeah. I do. Yeah. And, and that is one criticism I have of Cornell West. Like, I, I don't have a problem with him saying like brother Trump or brother Biden. Some people have an issue with that. Right. They're like, don't call these establishment politicians like brother. Right. I don't have a problem with that because I think it shows like people that he really views us all as members of the human race and we're all each other's siblings and like all that stuff. No matter how morally compromised you are, you're still a human being and you're still a member of the human race. Right. I'm fine with that. What I do have an issue with, though, is when he's like has to make these comments like I don't I don't think Jimmy Dore is racist. Like clearly he is. I I love Tucker Carlson. Why the fuck do you love Tucker Carlson? Like why do you got to add those like compliments in there? When they're completely undeserved. Tiana's not buying it. She says there's no way that that's true. I honestly, I hope you're. <laughs> but yeah, let's uh, take a few or a couple more seconds of this in. Women, if he looks at them and can't identify with their suffering, I've got a critique and an indictment. He said, "Well, you'll never win. You never win." Well, what 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 do you mean by winning here? If winning is on the way to Tom Watson in his latter stage, I'm not headed there ever 
And of course, I will never ask for anybody's permission, white, man, whatever they are, as to whether I ought to be raising my voice against vicious forms of white supremacy. And it's not simply because of skin pigmentation. Based as fuck. But yeah, I mean, oh, oh, I mean, I think that Cornell West was probably really shocked after that inter- exchange with Jimmy Dore. I don't, I don't, I think that obviously it's been obvious for us who have covered Jimmy for a long time. People, um, that he's evolved into just a right wing fucking talking point machine and that he wants to be the lefty guy that, um, you know, Tucker can have on or the lefty guy that like so-and-so right winger can have on to be like, Oh, before the left got so crazy, this is what we were talking about. We without the, honestly guys, the real thing the left should do is that we should just become the Nazi party. Whereas we should <laughs> support uh, national, you know, infrastructure building, uh, but we should throw every single minority under the bus. That's essentially Jimmy's sales pitch at this point. He's literally, like, giving you a nationalist, socialist, fucking Nazi-ass uh, fucking uh, policy prescription, right? Like, no, 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 don't talk about white supremacy. Like, oh, you only care about trans people. Accusing <laughs> Dr. West of not caring about the fucking 41% of black businesses that closed during COVID, etc., 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 right? I think that it's obvious to us but I think that was the first time where it became obvious to Cornell West. And I'm wondering how that'll impact Jimmy in the future. Are we still going to see guys like Chris Hedges go on there and talk about how he's the only last remaining brave truth, uh, truth teller, right? Uh, or, or are we going to start to see, you know, less and less of that? And then the lefties that are going on there are like Max Blumenthal, uh, you know, and dudes that, you know, uh, yeah, they're definitely never going to challenge any Republican or say anything that you're like now, you know, rabidly right wing base wants to hear. Bro, watch this shit. This is this is fucking wild. Here's Jimmy uh talking with uh what's his face from the couch but Mr. Potato Head from the couch. Oh, yeah, potato. Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. They're having a, a quite an enlightened discussion <laughs> over here about the topic of white supremacy. Get ready for this guys. Yes. In and identity politics. It wants us to think of ourselves as separate. It doesn't want us to think as a collective. And that's where all this is coming from right now. And that's why the Democrats and Bank of America have embraced talking about white supremacy. (laughs) Not because they care about it and are going to do anything about it, but because they know it's a way to manipulate us and keep us separate. Okay. And uh, again, it's just stunning to me how few people can tell the difference between someone trying to encourage someone to be better because they support their platform and someone criticizing someone and trying to knock them down. I'm not trying to knock down Cornell West one bit. I'm trying to help Cornell West have a more coherent strategy that actually can do damage to the establishment. Pause this, pause this, pause and, this. And, and have... Jimmy has his head so far up his ass, he must have only eaten his own shit for the last week. Uh, this is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> to think that you're in a position to tell this man who is a fucking te- like 100 to 1 smarter than you by every measurable metric, more successful than you by every measurable metric, and you're going to just sit there and lecture him and tell him, hey, actually, man, you've devoted your whole life to, uh, you know, untangling the, the vicious entwinement of capitalism, white supremacy, patriarchy, etc. But I want you to forget all about that because I actually know what's best. And uh, my audience really wants you to say that you don't think racism is real and that uh, they're only smearing people like Tucker Carlson with uh, his claims of racism <laughs> because... Uh, He's a truth teller. And, and why don't you adopt that model? It's been really successful for all the guys that started off on Fox News. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's it's fucking crazy. Um, oh, my God. Uh, get a load of this, though. And wield power. That's what I'm trying to do. It's obvious that's what I'm trying to do. And the people who don't. By the way, never had a single fucking critical word about the People's Party or Nick Brana when there were legitimate, valid the accusations and all kinds of stories coming out from that debacle. Jimmy Dore never criticized it. And the people that were being critical, he called them ops. He said they were Democratic Party ops who were just trying to tear down the third party movement because they were being critical of his friend Nick Brana. Now there's actually a party, like an actual candidate running in an actual party on actual ballots. And all this motherfucker has to do is tear him down, disrespect him. Uh, but yeah, uh, listen to this. See that are, I think are just that bad faith actors, just like Cornell West bad faith attacked me just the way he's been bad faith attacked. It's it's crazy. 
the that the left can't get their their game together, especially after after eight years of Barack Obama doing right wing policies. And now after three years of Joe Biden being an unbelievable fascist, crushing workers unions. You know, anyway, I, I don't have much more time to talk also, about this today, can we so pause this I'll one just more leave time. it. This is how you know Jimmy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Crushing worker unions, he's going to mention the rail strike. That's the one thing that he can talk about because it happened like eight months ago, and that was the last time he read his lines. He doesn't know anything about Joe Biden's policy. I'm going to think Joe Biden is like the most based guy ever. But again, you guys are just dumb. You do not understand practice. Jimmy does not understand. That. Like he wants to talk about union guys and pay lip service to labor. I just had a call for a fucking hour today with one of my guys whose full-time job is reporting on labor. OK, and we talked about a lot of the extreme accomplishments that have happened under the NLRB under Joe Biden. Right. He mentioned today that if the, that in the build up to the uh, uh, World Cup coming to Kansas City, that they're going to use this uh, new decision that uh, basically makes it way harder for uh, jobs to union bust. And that if they do uh, any illegal uh, tactics, then they have to uh, immediately recognize the union and begin negotiating. Right. These are big deals. These are big deals. And again, yes, it was wrong, in my opinion, of Joe Biden to. Uh, uh, you know, break the rail strike. I, I mean, there were negotiations that occurred with the Biden administration and the rail workers after the fact. However, I still think it's a, it, it, it breaches on your right to protest, your right to organize. And I did not agree with that. But to have him just use it as like a fucking throwaway, he doesn't. That's the other thing, guys. He doesn't mention Donald Trump because he doesn't want to say anything bad about Donald Trump. Right. And then he goes and he calls it like fuck, like saying that Joe Biden's out here trying to break unions, bro. Union fucking density. And, and also, uh, the reason that everybody says union density is because uh, for the first time in fucking forever, union membership is actually going up. So they say, oh, union density is going down because most of the jobs that are being created aren't unionized. Uh, right. But by every metric in the next four or five years, as a result of the policies that were implemented into the Biden administration, there will be a continued increase in union uh, density across the country. And uh, yeah, it's just dishonest to say that that's not the case. I can say that that's not adequate enough and that there could be way more union density under another president but if you're comparing that to joe or joe biden excuse me to donald trump uh and your concern is the union workers uh th it's just completely disingenuous and it's just revealing that he has absolutely no idea what he's talking about he never does have any idea what he's talking about guys even when he's asking the most like bare bones questions he's reading from a script he doesn't write any of this shit he pays somebody uh make some sign uh um uh what's it called an end uh, a non-disclosure agreement right so he can treat him like shit get drunk or fucking like you know <laughs> uh use their uh creative labor to uh you know build his uh nest egg yep do you want to say anything craig just really quickly too i just the the conversation after dr cornell west was so important even kurt said i don't even know what that means and i think it's okay when you talk about white supremacy for us to have conversation kurt metzger jimmy Dore's white co-host apparently said he doesn't know what white supremacy means how the fuck do you not know what like it's pretty obvious it's pretty obvious oh my god yeah conversations about that and i'm willing to sit down with rbn and nico house and be educated on what they think it needs today but if you have to those bring are that the people that pause this the nico house ron DeSantis, fucking number one soldier are you fucking kidding me this is these guys are literally they're, they're not even like to say that they're dumb it's not exactly dumbness right it, it's the fact that they know exactly how to play all of those 1.24 million subscribers like a fucking fiddle and the audience base of Jimmy Dore is so dumb. Guys, I don't even say this lightly because I don't like to like bash people that aren't doing this professionally. But the regular viewership of Jimmy Dore, I think, is probably some of the lowest IQ individuals yep. that have figured out how to make YouTube work. Yep. Uh, and and that's, that's just the sad reality of it. He is pandering to people who are fucking dumb and are deeply misled and are deeply conspiratorially minded. Yep. Yep, a hundred percent, bro. A lot of them are literally just like very low IQ people, and I know that sounds like very insulting or condescending to say, but it, it actually is just true, right? It actually is just true, and I think that a lot of times, uh, really being that stupid does kind of explain some of the more insane, you know, conspiratorial and bigoted tendencies you see from people like this. Like, I don't know if you saw my tweet about Cynthia McKinney, uh, the two thousand eight. Oh yeah, I did actually about how she dude went full of fucking nuts. Yeah, just straight, straight up anti-Semitic uh, posting, you know, mm. will the whites and the blacks unite to defeat our common enemy, the Jews? And, and then a star of David was on there. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, and part of me, I, I did retweet it and I was like, you know, this is disgusting. Fuck anti-Semitism or whatever. Um, but part of me knows that Cynthia McKinney is not well, like clearly not, you know, in my opinion, at least based on other things she tweets, based on 
other statements I've seen. Like, in my opinion, a lot of times where you see very clear examples of like, it just unhinged anti-Semitism, for example, or really conspiratorial thinking. A lot of times I find that there's a strong correlation with like mental illness, stuff like that. Um, you know, not to just say everyone who disagrees with me is mentally ill and low IQ, but you know what I mean? Like when it comes to those like really unhinged kind of conspiracy well, theories. That... No, dude, that, and that's the that's the that's the cop out pushback, right? Oh, everybody that disagrees with me is low IQ and mentally ill. No, there are plenty of people who are high IQ that I disagree with. OK, uh, but this is this is not it. The Jimmy Dore thing, he's, he, and we, we, it's almost like we've beaten it into the ground. What Jimmy Dore did was he did the Dave Rubin thing, but he was smart enough to know. And we talked about this, I think, the other day. He was smart enough to know that Dave Rubin lost his charm. He lost his, I don't know, clout. He lost his like relevance for the most part when he came out and said why I'm leaving the left. So Jimmy knows he has to fucking double and triple and quadruple down that he's not leaving the nest or the left. Excuse me. Because then he can still be the left guy that says, oh, the left got too crazy for me. Oh, yada, yada, yada. Like they make everything about white tr supremacy and trans folks. And, you know, yeah, personally, I, I, I go outside and I, I think it, I think that socially we're just fine out here. We just need to give people health care. It's like, well, dude, that's because you're blind and a bigot. Yep. Yeah. And also listen to how fucking racist this is, by the way. Um, we've been telling you guys that like people like Jimmy Dore just use the the folks at RBN is like tokens to shield themselves from accusations of bigotry and racism. But it basically just comes out in a pure admission here from Mr. Potato Head. Um, whoo. Station after Dr. Cornell West was so important. Even Kurt said, I don't even know what that means. And I think it's okay when you talk about white supremacy for us to have conversations about that. And I'm willing to sit down with RBN and Nico house and be educated on what <laughs> the two black channels that I, that he knows of that haven't, completely distance themselves from the jimmy door sphere because they're just that shameless and they'll throw you know <laughs> anyway uh yeah they'll refuse to admit that jimmy door is obviously a racist a disgusting disgusting bigot um because of the fact that they're grifting off of his audience and they're writing his coattails so they'll call everyone else racist they'll criticize everyone else endlessly for anything uh but jimmy door can lecture dr west he can disrespect dr west to his face he can tell dr west not to discuss racism and white supremacy and they'll sit there and and defend jimmy they won't defend dr west they choose fucking jimmy door over dr west and then and then this is how they're discussed on his and show then just compare this compare this oh i want him to do better blah 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 compare this to the rfkj interview where he just pats him on the balls yep. a few times rfkj says no i don't believe in medicare for all and i don't really believe in a public option oh and i also think that we should definitely keep giving more money to Israel and, and Jimmy doesn't cut him off and Jimmy doesn't like fucking talk down to him and demean him and tell him that oh you know if you keep doing this then uh you know it's gonna really seriously invalidate you right but because Jimmy knows his audience is fucking in love with RFKJ so he has to come up with a way where he can be the mediator right so he's like oh why don't why don't you debate my good friend Max Blumenthal on this that way if it goes <laughs> poorly I could say ah, I really like Max but yeah he you know I just think everybody should smooth it all these guys are really both on the same team that's what Jimmy wants to be able to do anyway he doesn't have any interest in doing that with Cornell West Dr. West um but he does have it with a raving lunatic anti-vaxxer go yep. fucking figure who doesn't believe in the two like any of the progressive policies that Jimmy says are his line in the sand yeah and am I not Am I wrong for thinking this is crazy? They're literally admitting like, oh, yeah, we'll we'll sit down with the two black channels that still take us seriously for them to explain what white supremacy and racism are to us. But then we'll just conveniently forget everything that was told to us the next time, you know, we need to appease a right wing audience or pander to Trump supporters. That's what this is. They're using them as fucking tokens and shields and they'll have them on. And then they'll let them explain what white supremacy is. And they'll say, oh, yeah, that is a good point. Right. Uh-huh. Great. Now go back and keep defending me constantly. And then I'll forget everything you said, completely ignore this analysis, completely, you know, fail to call out anyone like, you know, Tucker Carlson for being a white supremacist. As Cornell West said, Tucker Carlson routinely smears George Floyd. Uh, this is this is what we're dealing with. And I just I just can't believe he made that admission on the show. They think it means today, but oh, if you, you have to chime in. Oh, I was just going to say, I think at this point they know who they're catering to, bro. So they admit that on the show just because that's what their fucking audience wants to hear. They they want to see other white people say that racism isn't a problem in this country. They want them to say that it's like, did you see that ridiculous Ian Miles Chong tweet that 
uh, Elon Musk liked, and it was like talking about how like fucking I don't know, like racism isn't real for like fucking adult people, and it's actually like white people who are the victims of race. This is the kind of audience that they're fucking yelling yep. that shit to. Yep. I think it's okay when you talk about white supremacy for us to have conversations about that. And I'm willing to sit down with RBN and Nico House and be educated on what they think it means today. But if you have to bring that dictionary, you need elevator pitches over here. This is a presidential campaign. Mm -hmm. And the one area I think that you shouldn't have had to apologize, but you did, was when Cornell West kept on saying, I can think for myself, I no, was... you're supposed to have a presidential campaign that's supposed to have a plan in place to go after people across party lines. And whether you like the People's Party See, or this not, is He's possible. moved away. That's actually not true. This is how you know he has absolutely the, the like <laughs> most shallow, but also just dumb. This guy's not smart. Okay, he's 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 not very bright. He's he's gonna tell you that an effective camp presidential strategy is to not run as a Democrat or a Republican or a Green, but to run as a presidential candidate for everybody. I would ask I would ask Mr. Potato Head to tell me one uh, example of that being at all successful. It it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah exactly and we're still in the like we're not yeah either way this is so so fucking dumb and, and the people's party well he did move away from the people's party and you know they had the right strategy now he's you know now he's with the woke that is green insane. party it's so fucking dumb bro <laughs> it's so fu imagine pretending to care about the third party movement and then scolding cornell west for moving from a non-existent fake third party with no ballot access to a legitimate third party party with like 45 state ballot imagine being mad about that and and still claiming to actually give a shit about the third party goal obviously these people don't give a fuck they don't give a fuck and this dude's not even a leftist this dude is not he doesn't even obviously no one on the jimmy door show is a leftist but this dude doesn't even pretend to be a leftist this dude's a libertarian i think he basically just like fully admits that he's a fucking libertarian now so why are you even commenting on this um obviously yeah they're not talking about white supremacy over at the fucking libertarian party convention they're talking about you know sending nina turner to go pick crops that's what your fucking party talks about bro but on the green party side on the left yeah we actually do care about sticking up for marginalized people we actually do care about addressing societal inequality like fucking white supremacy which this country was founded on like how is this not how is this not part of your analysis? Yeah, it's it, it, it's 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 giving away the game, bro. It's giving away the game. And at this point, like there are some of these fuckers. I see them in our chat. I've been banning all of them because I don't want to <laughs> fucking see you or hear any of your thoughts. Because uh, I think that you're pathetic and worthless. And I mean that to every last one of you, Jimmy Dore stands. It's fucking poisoning our chat right now. Um, but I, I also just believe that you're too criminally dumb to be reached. Um, and I think that at this point, it's more just a matter of like, how much fun can we have dogpiling on the fact that some people legitimately still believe that Jimmy Dore is somehow a leftist? It's like it's like a it, it's like a textbook fucking uh, case study in like self delusion and also like a willingness to be manipulated by anybody with a platform. Yep, yep. It's it's freaking crazy to watch. Um, it's really crazy to watch again. <laughs> Jimmy Dore and his ilk are the ones that are the first to castigate anyone on the left for not being as enthusiastic about third parties as they are, right? Like everyone in this camp from Jimmy Dore to the people at RBN, like if you're not 100% as enthusiastic about any given third party candidate or movement as they are, then they will call you an op. They will call you a shit lib, a synthetic leftist, all this crap. Again, now we actually have a serious third party candidate with ballot access, Cornell West. Imagine going back a year ago and telling people that, oh, yeah, Cornell West is going to freaking run for president. And all the people that pretend to support the Green Party the most are going to just devote their entire freaking commentary to tearing him down, shitting on him, you know, nitpicking his candidacy and his message, um, which is kind of stupid because let's be honest, Cornell West is not going to win anyway. He's not going to become president. Uh, so this is dumb. Why are you obsessing about the fact that he's, you know, talking about racism too much or whatever? Like, that's not what's going to stop him from getting to 5%. If he doesn't get to 5%, no, he needs to be talking about Ukraine and how we're going to go to World War Three if we do anything but vote for Donald Trump from RFKJ, bro. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. We've got a lot of these guys. Like, shout out to you. Suri Ba right here. This is some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. The bright looks for and embraces converse. The online left looks for traitors. No grace, no solidarity, and one wonders why the left is powerless. Do you think that I should Wait, be one amplifying? Sec. Is he are you sure he's not talking about uh 
Peter Dow though? Because he might be responding to our conversation about Peter Dow and how even though Peter Dow is kind of a convert to the left, a lot of online lefties are still like refusing to. Um, I think that we're talking about how I th I'm pretty sure this is directly in response to how I said that Jimmy Dore and his ilk were not worth fucking reaching anymore. And I, obviously, if you're going to look at a black man that don't that spent his whole life seeking, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, liberation and uh, and all, it, it, uh, also like there's a reason why like I have. I have solidarity with people who disagree with me on the left, right? There are a bunch of fucking examples of that, but there are lines in the sand. When I can tell that you are literally just debasing the, the left policy positions in a way so that you can spoon feed your racist ass trans hating audience, uh, microcosm bite sized talking points that you don't even fucking understand and simultaneously ruining any chance that we have to build a fucking broad based coalition. That's the problem. And the reason why the left is powerless is because there's no fucking money in being a leftist. All the money is in being a fucking right winger, Suriba. Yeah. And apparently he was talking about. Oh, so sorry about that. Anyway, <laughs> what you said still applies to everyone who's not specifically Siraba, but is also making that point. Shout out um, to you, Siraba. You caught these hands quick because I was <laughs> I think you're maybe a little bit behind in the stream. Yeah, it's all good, bro. We really appreciate the comments. And yeah, I, I totally agree. A lot of the people who are, you know, going after Peter. We're about to get into that, by the way. I want to show you some examples. But anyway, thank you for that super chat man both of them very generous of you um but yeah back to the peter dow thing now that we have a good segue let's take a look at some of the unhinged responses from some of the jimmy Dore acolytes uh reacting to this news that cornell west picked peter dow to be his campaign manager i thought this was pretty unhinged because again in the past when it's come to third parties like the people's party and stuff a lot of jimmy Dore acolytes they've taken the position that well to criticize them at all is illegitimate or something or makes you an establishment hack because they're the you know they're one of the only people doing it so now again they're taking a very different stance uh, as it relates to cornell west and the people's party here's max blumenthal quote tweeting oh, cornell shot. west he runs out to go blow jimmy first chance he gets everybody's real surprised by that maybe then they'll still take you on tour uh so uh <laughs> yeah you can sniff coke and <laughs> tell bad jokes just like jimmy exactly exactly and it's like Again, your your only reaction to this piece of news is Jimmy Dore was right. Jimmy Dore was right. It's like it, this isn't about fucking Jimmy Dore, Max. Like what Cornell West is doing has nothing to do with fucking Jimmy Dore. Um, and and I'm sure a lot of people will point out, well, you guys are also framing this discussion through the lens of what Jimmy Dore thinks and what his audience thinks. And fair enough, but we're the fucking vanguard. This is a supposedly serious journalist, someone that likes to tout his journalistic credentials and you know his seriousness um and he can't frame this through any other fucking lens than jimmy door was right my boss jimmy was right yeah real real sophisticated analysis there max um let's take a look at some other examples of some of these crazy people this one's my favorite actually uh so these are some of the some of the clowns over at the indie news network oh this was your boy for a while gavin i remember you were tight with this guy for a second for a second we were um then yeah shit shit uh shit hit the fan but look at this guys this is this is hilarious the indie news network is basically just a bunch of clowns that suck off jimmy Dore for a living living or maybe just for a hobby because i don't really think they make much money their channels get like very few views but their whole whole it's an existence. identity yeah it's a lifestyle it's like those exactly. kids that love bts oh uh, you know those little <laughs> girls they would get all every mcdonald's fucking toy that comes out you know this is like the online political left version of that like you know yeah. so here's a colin who's one of these you know jimmy Dore dick suckers um <laughs> he says again the thing i abhor about independent media is the lack of consistency among certain personalities and of course you might think he's talking about jimmy uh that would be the obvious culprit of a online leftist commentator who has demonstrated a lack of consistency so you'd think he might be talking about jimmy nope not talking about jimmy he's talking about tim black for accusing Jimmy Dore of doing race baiting identity politics, but he includes Trump behind Jimmy. It, it, and I guess that's supposed to be some sort of a gotcha because there's like a picture of Trump in the background of the thumbnail behind Jimmy. And Colin is saying that that makes Tim Black a hypocrite because he's accusing Jimmy of doing race baiting identity politics, which is 100% accurate. But there's a picture of Trump in the thumbnail behind Jimmy. What a freaking gotcha. Yeah. Pretty freaking stupid, huh? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's hilarious. And isn't this the same guy that tried to, or, uh, maybe it was the indie news tweet that you put up before this, where he was like, they lightened Jimmy's skin to make it look like, you know, he was even, uh, yeah. wait, will you, will you pull that tweet back up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they s- superimposed that pic behind Jimmy, then used photo editing to make him look even whiter. <laughs> nice touch while yelling at, about everyone using identity politics to divide people, Johnson. Just so fucking crazy. Uh, that like Jimmy is a white guy. There's no hiding that. There's no making him more white. There's no making him less white. This man is fucking Chicago, like Polish guy. Like, yeah, he's fucking as white as they come, right? Snow White. Um, I don't know. Just fucking ridiculous. And also, just again, more and more revealing. Like, do you know what it is? Like a big problem with white people. And I'm sorry that this is gonna hurt a bunch of you fuckers in the chat's feeling. There's a big problem with white people on the left. They can't get on board with like LGBTQ issues or black issues because it's not actually just about them. Right. At that point, you actually have to exercise solidarity, which is something that Jimmy and his ilk are absolutely unwilling to do. They're not willing to say, hey, this isn't about me. This is about a power structure that impacts like my brothers and sisters across this country. And we have to systematically undo that. Right. Because we have more people. You see, this is what's fucking crazy. Jimmy will parrot the fucking statistics. Oh, we have, you know, uh, X amount, like, what is it, like, fucking 5% of the world's population, 25% of its prisoners, do not understand that that's because of white supremacy, right? Do you not understand that that is because of the racist history and fucking founding of this country and the fact that you can't just turn that off, right? You can't just not talk about that, right? And and the reason that he doesn't want to talk about it is because he has an audience of white people that don't want to hear about any issues that aren't about them. And it's crazy, too, because instead of talking about you know the meaningful issues like medicare for all or whatever he's got all these fucking just all these fucking deranged crazies convinced uh that any moment we're on the verge of like fucking world war three and that everybody is an op if that's not all that they're talking about and it's just completely ridiculous like he has his own esoteric um you know like raw meat things that he'll throw to his audience that he's cultivated over time right um but I don't know. The race baiting thing has become new, is like a newer addition, I would say, to the show, um, and just completely transparent. Right, right. Uh, here's another. Here's another one from Compton J. I'm officially out of the Cornell West skip. <laughs> I told you guys the other day. I was like, it's only a matter of time. CJ, he, 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 uh, he, he, uh, he stepped out of line, guys. I was like, damn, CJ is actually exercising some intellectual uh independence over here and he's he's breaking with the rbn uh you know group think and he's uh talking about how jimmy actually really was talking down to cornell west he was the one that cut a lot of those clips and got them circulating around the internet so everybody could see them right uh but i guarantee you he got a talking to uh from old nick cruz back over there boss man nick said hey buddy uh you want to you want to keep your spot on the rbm you want to still have your spot on revolutionary blackout network yep you're gonna have to fucking change your opinion on that guy uh absolutely i mean just completely oh bro we got to stay close to jimmy bro oh, okay bro it's just completely ridiculous over here uh this dude has no conviction at all uh, but he nope. does love to fucking pretend yeah oh it's so it's so hilarious how again these crew th- these crew of people are the most enthusiastically pro third party ever and then as soon as jimmy Dore turns on their guy cornell west all of a sudden just out of nowhere mysteriously they also turn on Cornell West. I, I wonder if it had anything to do with their dear leader, Jimmy Dore. I, w- I really wonder. I-, I-, I imagine it's completely, you know, a separate and unrelated issue. I- I'm guessing there's no correlation between those things, right? Of course there is. Um, <laughs> this is so, so funny. And again, like, I, I think it's fine to say I've chosen a different manager. I don't think you have to be like, I love, I love Peter Dow and I would have made the same choice. But if you support a candidate because you align with that candidate's values and their policies more than any of the other people in the, in the election or in the race, then like you wouldn't let this get in the way of supporting that candidate. Like I thought that Faz Shakir was a a kind of weak pick for Bernie in 2020. I was like, who is this guy? Like, he doesn't really have a lot of experience. Seems kind of like a noob. I don't know if he's going to be able to get the job done. I thought it was a kind of odd decision for Bernie to hire Faz Shakir. Did that stop me in any way from being the loudest and proudest Bernie bro that I possibly could be? Of course not. Of course not. Cause I'm not stupid. And even if I would have 
pick someone else. That doesn't mean I was just going to stop supporting Bernie and stop supporting the policies that he was advocating for. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So again, I don't, I don't care if you haven't beef with Peter Dow or if you think he's cringy or whatever. Um, it's, it's like, who cares, right? Who cares? I can't imagine like he would have to choose someone a lot worse than Peter Dow for me to be like, it's over. It's done. I mean, that's a great point, right? Bob Shakir, not my fucking first pick, but also kind of irrelevant to me. Bernie Sanders was the ideal candidate and we supported the fuck out of him. Um, yeah, again, it just all comes back to this is a game, right? This is a game to keep viewership up, right? Like the guys at RBN, they love to call us like air conditioned leftists or whatever. Like Nick Cruz, why don't you go ahead and post your last pay stub on the fucking internet? Uh, wh when was the last time you worked a day job where you sweat for fucking eight and a half hours, nine hours? Like I'd love to see because that doesn't sound like it's happening anytime soon. And uh, now you have a uh, uh, now you have an obligation to be Jimmy Dore's chief ball licker. In fact, the funniest joke that um, that Sam Cedar ever made that I heard was, uh, he, you know, he was talking about how he, he hadn't had a ton of opportunities to go to NBA games. Right. But he, he got one. And, and, it, and he said that, you know, it never really made sense for him, like why you would you would want to be like a ball boy until he went to his first NBA game. And he was like, wow, you're really down on the on the court. You are you are right in the midst of it. And he was like, so, you know, that kind of always explained the Aaron Maté predicament to me. And I think that uh, even more so than Aaron Maté, who does have his own laurels that he can rest his head on. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that the guys at, <laughs> at RBN, uh, maybe not so much. I, they're just Jimmy Dore's chief ball boys. Um, pretty, pretty hilarious. But anyway, let's see what other what other fun uh, tweets can we. Uh, get up here. One thing that I would, I guess I'll throw up while Gavin is uh, uh, away from screen was something else that we had in the folder. I'll get Gavin to react to it anyway. But uh, Barbara Lee. Um, so the California governor, this is an interesting piece of Politico. He basically shafted Barbara Lee. Governor Newsom has ruled out appointing Rep. Barbara Lee to the U.S. Senate should Dianne Feinstein leave before her term is up. Uh, he says, I don't want to get involved in the primary. Um Newsom said in a taped interview that set there Sunday on NBC's Meet the Press. It was the clearest he's been in terms of opting for a Senate placeholder. Um, he says it would be completely unfair to the Democrats that have worked their tail off. That's the primary blah, blah, blah. Uh, long story short, um, Barbara Lee felt shafted by this. She took to Twitter. Uh, she says, I'm troubled by the governor's remarks. The idea that a black woman should be appointed only as a caretaker to simply check a box of insulting countless black women. Uh, across the nation who have carried the Democratic Party to victory election after election. There are currently no black women serving in the Senate since 1789. There have only been two black women senators uh, who served a total of 10 years. So that's in over 200 years, not a very good ratio. Um, she adds that the perspective of black women in the U.S. Senate is sorely needed and needed for more than a few months. Governor Newsom knows this, which is why he made the pledge in the first place. The governor intends to keep his promise and appoint a black woman to the Senate. The people of Cal uh, California deserve the best possible person for that job, not a token appointment. Black women deserve more than a participation trophy. We need a seat at the table. Um, so, yeah, Gavin, did you have a response? Yeah, yeah. So this is an interesting one. A lot of people have been talking about the fact that the reason why uh, Dianne Feinstein is not stepping down is because Gavin Newsom, who promised to pick a black woman to replace Dianne Feinstein in the event that she stepped down. Gavin got muted, but he's coming back. All right. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Anyway, a lot of people assume that black woman would be Barbara Lee, who of course is very anti-war. She voted against the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. She's quite progressive for a congresswoman in the Democratic Except Party. Except for that damn Kamala in <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? There's definitely been some issues. But anyway, a lot of people have thought that Gavin Newsom was going to pick Barbara Lee. And that's why Nancy Pelosi was so insistent on the election actually happening rather than their, uh, you know, being a uh, appointed replacement rather than letting Gavin Newsom appoint Feinstein's replacement. Pelosi and the Democratic establishment have been pretty insistent on there actually being the primary because they're pretty confident in Adam Schiff to win that primary. That's who they want to win. And he's far less progressive than Barbara Lee. Of course, he's running against Katie Porter, who's also a little bit. A little bit more progressive. Sorry, guys, my Ethernet cord just came unplugged. 
Hopefully yeah, you can yeah Katie me. Porter's a mixed bag for sure. She's definitely done some good things on like, you know, ending the corporate welfare state and like, you know, bringing some challenges to big tech and big business. But across the board, yeah, uh, uh, she's definitely preferable to ship, but not exactly right. like a progressive here. Right. And now Newsom is kind of backtracking on these comments, saying that he would pick a caretaker for the Senate seat. Given the fact that the election is about to happen, he's saying, I'm not going to pick anyone that's currently running for that seat. And of course, Barbara Lee is currently running for that seat. So basically what he's saying here is like, whoever I choose, I don't want that to be the actual senator. I want that person to basically just be a caretaker for that seat until the actual election happens, which is between Adam Schiff, Katie Porter and Barbara Lee. But Barbara Lee is like in a distant third in that election. I was say, She's, Barbara Lee has like no ch- Right. Uh, she has she has no chance of winning that election. In fact, she's I think the only reason she even joined the election in the first place was so that in the event Feinstein stepped down, she would be chosen to replace Feinstein. Didn't work out that way. Didn't work out that way. And of course, a lot of people, Barbara Lee, are pissed about that because they interpreted Newsom's original comments as would, in fact, choose Barbara Lee. I have mixed feelings about this. I do. Because on one hand, yes, obviously I wish Barbara Lee would get that Senate seat. She's not only better than Adam Schiff, I think she's better than Katie Porter too. So like if I could have my pick, yeah, I would absolutely put Barbara Lee in the Senate. I would, you know, totally 100% vote for her if I could. And I think she's right, of course, about the lack of representation for black women in the Senate. Obviously all that is correct. But that being said... I think that if I think that if Barbara Lee was not a progressive, if she was just like a Kamala Harris kind of Democrat, then I would I would actually be on Newsom's side here. Like I, I would that it would be undemocratic of him to appoint this uh, candidate who's polling in third place against two other clearly more popular candidates um, because of the fact the election is so close. I actually kind of agree that it's more democratic for Newsom to just kind of pick a caregiver and then let the people decide between their actual three choices without him clearly putting his thumb on the scale for Barbara Lee, if that makes sense. And I know it's, it's, it's tough to say that because I like Barbara Lee and I want her to win. But like I said, if, if the roles were reversed and Adam Schiff was the black woman in the situation and Barbara Lee was the white dude, obviously we'd all be pissed at Gavin Newsom and we'd be like, who cares about, the identity it's the policy that matters and you can't just use identity politics as a way to you know get some corporate stooge into the senate that's what we would all obviously be saying if the roles were reversed but because of the fact that barbara lee is progressive a lot of uh lefties are ignoring that or kind of overlooking it um so i'm a little bit conflicted admittedly what do you think zach um i i i share a lot of the sentiment that barbara lee put forward that we need to do a lot more to have you know uh black women leadership in in the senate right only two black senators black women senators uh in the entire history of the united states like i definitely see where she's coming from in that capacity but yeah i mean as far as like allowing the governor to like appoint a place replacements for the senate uh, it does seem a little anti-democratic to me right right and again if if the if barbara lee was like a corporate candidate who was coming in third in this election. And then Gavin Newsom picked that. Everyone would be like, well, why don't you pick one of the candidates that's polling actually well in this race, not the one that's in third place. So like, I understand both arguments. Ultimately, I still, you know, wish that he picked Barbara Lee um, just because I, you know, prefer her politics. And ultimately that's what really matters. But from a democratic perspective, I do understand this. I, I do understand it. And it really should be up to the people of California, especially Senators, you know, they're in there for six years. That's a long ass time. Um, I do think that California deserves to choose their next senator, uh, specifically because Gavin Newsom chose their last freaking senator after Kamala Harris. He picked her appointment. I, I think his name is like Alex Padilla or something. Um, yeah. Total corporate stooge, of course, but he picked the last senator. Um, it, it seems like, and, and plus, you know, one of California's two senators has literally been basically. MIA mentally for the last term. Um, so yeah, I think they deserve to pick their next senator. I'm certainly hoping that they pick Katie Porter over Adam Schiff. And honestly, as as much as I hate to say it, Barbara Lee, it's time to drop out and endorse Katie Porter because you're not going to win. And if you don't win, you're only going to take votes from Katie Porter. I hate to say it, but it is Gavin true. making the spoiler. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, again, if I had been my watching choice... too much Breaking Point, <laughs> <laughs> getting my DNC checks cashed. <laughs> Big seltzer money must have hit the direct deposit. <laughs> anyway, um, we're probably gonna wrap up things, guys. Got a couple super chats to address, and obviously, if you want to, you know, talk about anything else, Zach. Feel free to bring something up, oh, but I know. I mean, no, I, I mostly just wanted to get in here and talk a little bit about the Cornell West, Peter Dow, and the fucking kerfuffle that came. After that, we can come back on tomorrow if we have a, a more fleshed out show after I don't feel like my fucking body was recovered from a fucking shipwreck. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in today, and we're going to address some of these super chats real quick. Shout out to you, Quintessential, for the super chat. Chomsky hates Zizek. Interesting. I, I'm not surprised necessarily, but I don't specifically know why he hates Zizek. Do you know anything about that, Zach? I have no idea about the Chomsky Zizek beef, but honestly, at some point we might have to delve into that. I think that I don't know. I, honestly, Zizek has been on some weird shit recently, and so has Noam Chomsky. So who knows what side of that beef we'd fall down on? For sure, for sure. Anyway, shout out to you, man. Um, also, thank you so much, Zachary, for the 199. You see Woody Harrelson asked about the Russia-Ukraine war. I did see that. Yeah, I did see that. Um, you know, it was kind of funny. It was interesting to hear his reaction to that whole situation. Uh, I think Woody Harrelson's like a big RFK guy, so it kind of checks out. Yeah, Woody Harrelson, there's so much that I like about him, right? One, the movie White Men Can't Jump, classic. Uh, two, his performance in, uh, what's it, Triangle of Sadness. Uh, thought that he was absolutely excellent in that. Uh, but when the man starts branching out into politics, sometimes he loses me a little bit. I like the stoner vibe. I like the question everything. But I think we could do a little more homework, bro. I know you have time on your hands. Um, anyway, no, nah, Woody Harrelson, he seems cool, but I would not go to that guy for any political analysis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably fair. Um, but shout out to you, Zachary. And as always... Got to plug Triangle of Sadness. Everyone watch that movie if you want to see a hilarious he Woody Harrelson. He plays a bass comrade. He does play a bass comrade in that movie. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Zachary. Really appreciate that. Also, shout out to you, Zach, for the five bucks. As much as I detest Trump, I agree with those who say that the U.S. should be out of NATO once and for all. However, Trump is just saying that clearly. Well, the thing about Trump, Zach, is that he also said we should have fucking universal health care you know, in 2016. He says anything. He'll say literally whatever he thinks we'll get a applause or, you know, whatever people want to hear. Uh, but obviously, no, if Trump gets reelected, he's not going to disband NATO or, you know, get the U.S. out of NATO. That would be way too much work. That would like, you know, just just take too much willpower and organizing. Trump's not that sophisticated. It's not going to happen. Trump couldn't get anything done besides a fucking tax cut for the rich. OK, the Republican Party had run for eight years on on repealing obamacare he couldn't even get that done okay that was like the big mission for the people forget about it because he fucked it up and that's why we still have obamacare but john mccain shout out to john mccain bastard in his own right but in this case he came in clutch john mccain hated donald trump so fucking much that he torpedoed uh his repeal and re they were they always say repeal and replace they just mean repeal uh but he, he kind of uh kamikaze that one uh for uh donald trump so anyway yeah, i went out with a bang um, but yeah, no, Donald Trump is not capable of getting anything done. And I agree also that the United States should probably, I mean, I, I just don't agree that there's much of a purpose for NATO left. Um, uh, but anyway, shout out to you. And shout out to Das Boat's Fleisch. JD should invite the birds aren't real guy. Yeah, I think that that would be some some sound, uh, sage contributions to that disc. Bro, the Jimmy Dore show is getting dumber and dumber. Every time I check up on that fucking show, I'm like, oh my God, this is getting really bad. And he's starting to have on these like weird like right-wing commentators too, just like explicitly right-wing commentators on his show. Like there's just one random woman who's now the producer of his show. And she just has a YouTube channel with this really cringy, like right-wing sketch comedy about like Joe Biden and the Democrats. And it's like all the most low hanging fruit, like boomer bullshit that you could imagine. Not at all clever or funny. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's getting bad over there. It's getting real bad. I'm glad that unlike, you know, some of our colleagues, the folks at RBN, for example. Oh, God. Can you imagine how embarrassing it would be to have to come out there and defend that piece of shit or fucking associate with them at all? Yeah. See, here's what's here's what's funny. You can either have your cake or you can eat it, too. Right. Gavin and I, we're, you know, we have a we have a, a fledgling 
podcast. I like to call it. Uh, I, I like to call it a poor man pod. Uh, but we have our integrity. We I say whatever the fuck I want, right? I say whatever the fuck I want, and I think that that's like one of the last things that you still have as as a as a red blooded American, right? Like just say whatever the fuck you want to, right? Once you get to the end of your rope, right? You just you say whatever the fuck you want to, right? Or or you're like, oh, I can't say that. It's my job, right? And to well, a one, you know, in, in one hand, that's totally reasonable, right? Like Gavin and I have a bunch of homies that are not working in politics that are just working in like whatever the fuck kind of career path is like, uh, you know, to pay the bills. Right. And I, and if they were, and if I was like, Oh yeah, dude, you should like retweet this. And they would be like, bro, my boss is like such a scumbag. Like if I retweet this, like, like I'm going to get fired. Like I can't, like they really pay attention to my Twitter. I'd be like, that's fucked up. That's un-American. That's wrong. I would not put up with that, but I don't really blame them. I'm like, ah, oh, you got to pay your bills. Like you're working on a career. Like maybe you're in like, I don't know, some sort of fucking industry where it's really antiquated and run by, like, old people. Like, maybe you want to have your own car dealership or some shit like that. I don't fucking know, right? Um, But, I don't Anyway, I'm on a fucking hill here, but... Uh, I'm sick. Totally. I'm just... <laughs> no, I feel you. I feel you, bro. Um, Yeah, shout out to you, Dust. Oh, yes, and then the last thing I was going to run... I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. I, I fucking bla- uh, brain farted, but no... What I was going to say was is that you can either do that, right? Or you can, like, go out every single day and be, like, the holier-than-thou guy that's, like, everybody else is a sellout. Everybody else is fake. Everybody else is, like, fucking X, Y, or Z. Like, do I think that Joe Scarborough goes out there and says exactly what he means every morning on fucking MSNBC? No, that's why I don't listen to Morning Joe, right? And if he did say exactly what he mean, I wouldn't want to hear it fucking anyway, right? But there's just, like, a certain level of, like, I understand that corporate media is controlled. Um what's a new phenomenon is the hyper audience captured independent youtuber where their entire sales pitch to their audience is that we are 100 percent independent but that's just so laughably untrue absolutely correct 100 percent 100 percent um but yeah shout out to you das bosa fleisch and thank you once again tool droid always love seeing you in the chat man for the uh, 642 i wonder if the few leftists that still watch door have ever reflected on why so many other leftists stopped watching him interesting to ponder. Yeah, well, I mean, let's be honest, very few leftists still watch Jimmy Dore. If you look at his comments, you'll immediately recognize that. I would say 80% of Jimmy Dore's audience is just like explicitly right wing, like Trump supporting kind of people. Um, the the leftists that still associate with Dore are actually mostly like commentators, people like the the folks from RBN. Um, stuff like that and yeah the reason why they can't admit the obvious is because they have a financial incentive not to like they're grifting off of his audience they're writing his coattails um, and as soon as they yeah, that that's the golden goose laying the golden eggs once you kill the goose you know where the fuck are you going to get those eggs from and that's their whole grift so yeah it's getting harder for them it's getting a lot harder for them to defend this guy um, which leads to them sometimes now speaking outside of both sides of their mouth when they're talking about the way he discusses Cornell West. But yeah, I mean, that's why they uh, they won't be honest about it. And yeah, it's deeply embarrassing. It's deeply embarrassing. I cannot imagine having to do that song and dance every time we went live, you know, lying to you guys, to your fucking faces um, and telling you that someone is an ally when clearly they are an enemy. 100%. Shout out to you, Tool Druid. Really appreciate that. And shout out to you, Quintessential. What if uh, a study showed he'd get a bigger vote share if he quieted on the race rhetoric? Hence, Patreon question, should message be tailored to get more votes? I think you're referencing that Giannis Farfarkas says no. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a slippery slope, man. That's what the Democrats do. Like, uh, like w- what I think you should do when you're running for president is that you should have your fucking platform that you believe in and you should go make that case to the American people based off of your authentic value set, based off of your conviction based off of your primal desire to fucking lead and leave the world better than it was before. I don't have that primal desire, but I could see it in a guy like Cornell West. You know what I mean? That's why I would never run for fucking president, right? Like, I got a homie that's uh, thinking about running for city council, and I was like, wow, dude, I'm, like, so proud of you. Like, that's amazing. Uh, I would never, ever, 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 ever do that, though, right? Um, and, and if I were to run for fucking office, I would just say exactly what the fuck I think and probably lose, but that's my, you know, I, I, like, I just don't believe in, like, like, if Cornell West is running as a Green Party, he needs to run as a Green. He needs to run as an yep. anti-fascist, anti-white supremacist, pro-socialism, uh, working class message. I don't think he needs to pretend that he's a Republican uh, to try and get, like, a few straggler votes 
uh you know and then you know oh just re- rely on the loyalty of the like regular green party voters to know that oh you don't really mean all of that like crazy like Repo- or like or the reason you're not talking about any of this stuff is just like to court a right-wing audience like i don't think that that's necessarily like an effective strategy to run it, it, we have to remember also in a green party primary right cornell west is not the green party nominee at this point he is running in a green party primary uh and he needs to reach that electorate right not the republican that's what's so dumb about jimmy doris he doesn't even know that i guarantee you he doesn't even know or realize that cornell west has to win the primary for the green party so reaching out to a bunch of Republican voters right now isn't exactly an ideal strategy. Yeah, no, I, I actually totally agree with that, Zach. And actually, I don't even agree with the underlying logic at all. I don't think that if Cornell West just shut up about race and white supremacy, I don't actually think that, that would like increase his vote share. I think most normal people understand the fact that we live in a racist society. They understand white supremacy. And if they're white, they do understand their privilege. Most normal people like have enough intelligence and empathy to get it. Um, and then we, we see this thing with racist people like Jimmy Dore who, who want to pretend like everyone is secret, secretly just as racist as they are. Right. Uh, it's kind of like the, the homophobes who are secretly gay and they actually, they think everyone is secretly gay and everyone is constantly battling this like you know, sinful desire or whatever. Well, which is why they try and outlaw it. Yeah, which is crazy. Exactly. Right. When most people are like, actually, you know, nope, that's not something I'm struggling with. Unlike you, seems like. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. It. Gavin's not struggling with this. <laughs> this there, there's never been. There's never been a cock. This man wouldn't talk about. You know what I'm saying, though. In the same way, a lot of the people like Jimmy Dore, they just assume that everyone else is racist and that everyone else is instantly and immediately. No, that's actually a great point. That's a great point. I think that's exactly what it is. I think that he genuinely believes that, like, I think it just comes from being like, I don't know what the fuck it comes from, but like, there are like certain kinds of white folks where they just like they they like they don't realize that they're the ones that are wrong for having like the prejudice that they have, right? right? Like they don't realize that, like, like no, dude, like. If you come up to me and you like say some like sideways shit about trans people when you know we're talking together, I'm gonna be like, bro, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, I'm not gonna just like go along with that, right? right? Most people and, and want to like, live in an equal and a more equal exactly. society, but the people who are race like or, or transphobic or whatever, they think everybody else is in on it too, and that's why they'll just quietly like whisper because they're not confident enough in their positions. Most of them, um, they, that they still have to like you know take over it, like Jimmy Dort doesn't have the balls to say what he really thinks which is that i don't care about white supremacy because it only helps me it doesn't hurt me exactly anyway that's an interesting question shout out to you quintessential hopefully you appreciated our response also that's pretty funny uh kevin two deers go to a gay bar they leave and one deer says to another man i just blew 40 bucks that's pretty funny bro i don't know why you thought it was relevant to comment that but that did make me laugh Oh, shout out to you, Kevin. And shout out to Brian Barnett. God-fearing country people are not the enemy of the working class. The race war is a direct attack on Bernie, who ran on Ralph's campaign people. Uh, I don't know exactly what you're saying right here, Brian. I'm, I'm trying really hard to give you the benefit of the doubt, even though after I read it the first time, I didn't really want to. Uh, but I already I already clapped at Siri Ba over here too hard, and I want to be I want to be nicer the rest of the live stream. Uh, basically, what you're if you were saying that the like race war it, or if that's at all what you're fucking describing cornell west position as like baiting for a race war then i'm gonna ban you after this but shout out to you Brian. Uh, yeah i literally don't know what he's saying he said the race war is a direct attack on the bernie how what on it's, like, honestly it sounds like he's been listening to a lot of the jimmy Dore show because these are just a lot of like incoherent talking points with like a few fucking buzzword names like ralph nader bernie sanders race war like, uh, you know what I mean, Brian? I'm not trying to dog you too hard, Brian. Maybe you can explain yourself and we'll realize that, like, we should have, you know, had a more charitable reading. I agree that God-fearing country people are not the enemy, but I'm not going to fucking reach them by telling them that, uh, you know, we need to stop dividing ourselves based off of race when that's all our country's ever fucking done. And we have to, you know, systematically uh, stop that or you unravel that if we're ever going to move forward. Because I would love for the working class people of all races to link arm in arm and sing Kumbaya, but we can't pretend that we're just living in a world where that's potential reality without a lot of effort and work. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, shout out to you for the five bucks, bro. Not 100% sure what the fuck you're smoking, but appreciate the five dollar. Thank you also, Sierra Bob, for the six ninety nine. People were looking for a reason to get back on the Jimmy Dore bandwagon after his disastrous interview with West. Yep, 100%, bro. Because again, th- they keep saying, oh, Cornet, like we want to be in a leaderless movement, all this bullshit. Um, no, Jimmy Dore is your fucking leader. <laughs> Jimmy Dore is your leader. 
and you're going to do whatever he says. You're going to follow his, uh, you know, you're going to follow his lead. So if he's pro Cornell West, then you're pro Cornell West. If you're turns on Cornell West, then you got to find a reason to turn on Cornell West too. Of course, I'm talking from the perspective of the RBN crowd and the, you know, the do dissidents, all these, all these channels um, that just exist to jerk off Jimmy. Um, so yeah, that's a hundred percent correct. Sirba. Yeah. 100%. Shout out to you, Sirba. And again, I'm sorry. I glad back to you. You were making a good point. You're making a good point, but we love the Vanguard because we're, we're sharp shooters. You know, we, we move from the hip, but anyway, shout out to you, man. And shout out to you, Jimmy Catrone. Uh, she should squeeze Newsom. She'll be up like, Against a flood of money. I mean, if you're, I'm, I'm assuming that this is still talking about Barbara Lee. Unfortunately, Jimmy, I think that I, I don't know. I, I like obviously she'll be up against a, a flood of money. I'm not 100 percent sure what you mean by she should squeeze Newsom. Like she should really fucking go out there and try and get that appointment. I think the reason that she was pissed off is because Newsom had just made it really clear uh, on his meet the press uh, appearance that he was not going to do that. Right? Like he was not going to do that. So I don't know how she would be in a position to squeeze him. Uh, but I think Gavin and I would both agree with you that we think she's the ideal candidate. Um, it's just because I believe in democracy and I, I think the people of California should decide their senator. Like, I think that they should pick Barbara Lee. That's who I'd vote for. Um, but of course, between Adam Chip and, and Katie Porter, uh, it, it seems like it's become a two person race. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, I also don't a hundred percent know what you mean, Jimmy, about squeezing Newsom, but yeah, I mean, she is up against a flood of money. She's in the primary already, and she's not doing very well. It seems like Katie Porter kind of stole all of her thunder, honestly. Uh, but anyway, appreciate the five bucks, man. Did she ever get above ten percent in that race? Or like, I mean, I remember it was. It, it looks way more close in the polling that I I haven't looked at it in a while. But uh, I, I I thought that it was it was pretty pretty far removed from a chance for her to become successful. Yeah, yeah it's like neck and neck between Porter and Schiff, and then. Uh, Lee is like a distant third. Like I think she's still in single digits. So that's what I thought. I was like, I haven't seen her in like twelve, thirteen, even. Like I, I like. Yep. Yep. Anyway, shout out to you, Jimmy. Thank you so much, and shout out to you, Susie Stone. Really appreciate that. Very generous twenty dollars super chat, Jimmy. Or sorry, JB at RBN ranted against at least Jimmy's audience from the position of caring about people who are vulnerable. He's black, disabled, gay. And poor, so yeah, all the things that Jimmy Dore hates. Just kidding. <laughs> Not anyone in Jimmy's audience cared about. Um, yeah, I can't. Yeah. Um, well, JB, to his credit, is like the least unhinged person there, in my opinion. Like, I actually think JB is a pretty a sweet guy. He doesn't engage in the same sort of like unhinged insanity that some of his co-hosts do. Uh, so that makes sense that he would have he would have said that. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I feel bad for him having to associate with a bunch of people who run defense for a guy who did, you know, gay people, trans people, etc. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm. Oh no, I was just going to add that JB is a real nice guy. I, I got, I, you know, we had a lot of good chats with JB. His, I think his co-hosts are terrible, um, but I think that he's a pretty, he's a pretty likable guy, uh, and I think that he really does mean well. Yeah. Yup. Anyway, one more from Brian. Shout out to you, man. I'll try to take this seriously. The race war was started when Bernie's campaign took off to divide and conquer. Bernie ran on Ralph Nader's campaign message. Do not let the hate win. Man, I I mean. I was uh, right. Brian's about to get the old <laughs> axe. He's about to get the old 86. Thank you for the $5 on your way. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think the acknowledging the existence of racism is a race war. Obviously not. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Bye, Brian. <laughs> Have fun in Jimmy Dore's chat. Uh, and also, shout out to you, Mary. We really appreciate you. Um, and uh, for the super chat, and we are the Bernie. I, I think that that's fair. We are the. La I, whenever anybody asks me what I do for a living uh, outside of the bar, I always just tell them that we're the last remaining Bernie Bro podcast. We're we're the last diehard. We're the last death rattle of the Bernie Bro podcasting movement. Um, <laughs> so shout out to you, Mary. Yeah, that's so true. Um, but yeah, shout out to you, Mary. Really appreciate that. Um, and oh, thank you so much, Zach, the Celtics guy for the two bucks. Didn't RB in turn on RFK Jr. before Jimmy did? Um, I, I have no idea, man. I, I don't watch their show enough to know exactly the timeline of who turned on RFK Jr. first. Um, oh, no, here's what happened. So he went and he said all of that shit about Israel, right? And so then they just, you know, have a bunch of commentary about how RFK is really wrong about that. 
uh, but then no commentary about how Jimmy doesn't hold that guy accountable for any of his views on uh, air, right? And that's the old bait and switch at RV head, right? Uh, you know, they can never, they can, you know, identify if in the same way that Max Blumenthal came out and was like, fuck RFJ's position on Israel, but then still kind of like celebrated his other positions outside of that. Uh, I imagine that that's what happens. Um, anyway, but shout out to you, Zach, the Celtics guy and our, oh no, we have a couple more. You guys are trickling in the super chats at the end of this today that we really appreciate that. Uh, do you all think there has been another bifurcation of progressives with the debate between Crystal and Kyle and Brianna Joy Gray? Not really. I mean, I don't think that Brianna and Crystal and Kyle have ever had the exact same political analysis. I think that one of the things that we're just missing is the fact that Bernie Sanders united all of us with our, you know, sort of like separate, but like all on the left spectrum analysis. Uh, it was the it was a great unifier. So, of course, we were all talking about our shared goal of electing Bernie Sanders. Uh, but I think when you just make people hyper focus on policy line by policy line, like we've been doing in the wake of a, a Bernie Sanders movement, of course, you're going to find, you know, differences in, of opinions and disagreements. Gavin and I have difference of opinions and disagreements sometimes. So I don't think it's another bifurcation of progressivism. I think it's just a fanning out and a fleshing out of the different ideas that we feel are going to carry us through the next chapter. Yeah, and this is a debate that happens every four years. I remember in 2016 when Jimmy Dore and Sam Cedar were having a version of this debate. And now Crystal, Kyle, and Bree are having a, another iterate same debate. But this happens every four years. I don't think that the left will ever fully agree on strategy when it comes to voting blue versus voting green. But anyway, thank you for the five bucks, Angel of Redemption. Um, and thank you, Chris, for the 10 bucks. RFK Jr. has an interesting housing plan that would see the federal government be the co-signers. 3% interest on those mortgages and the first 500,000. Do you mean 500,000? Because, yeah, anyway, would be for teachers or you mean 50,000. You just put the comma in the wrong place. Either way. Interesting. I do think that's a I mean, I'd have to look at the plan like to really get a sense of it. But that seems like it would be an interesting idea what do you think about that zach yeah well i mean one thing that's not unique to rfkj and i haven't looked at his specific plan but the idea that the united states uh should encourage and if this the american people in investing in home ownership was something that we understood as a country until we destroyed uh the entire backbone of it which uh, of our economy which was home ownership that was how people retired right you buy your home you pay it off over 30 years and right around the time that you need to retire you don't have a mortgage anymore right uh, that, that, that was the whole idea. Now, after the 2008 financial crash, when they've made a generation, multiple generations of renters, uh, then people are going to be fucked at retirement. Right. And there are so many people right in the service industry, too. It's something I see a lot. People who are like 60, 63 years old and like they're like fucking pouring beers and standing on their feet for fucking 12 hours a day. Why? Because like, you know, that Social Security is not a, a 65 hours. The fuck old you are when you can get Social Security. Right. It's not enough for them to live on. They have to pay rent. So you're out, you know, you don't know at all if you're ever going to be able to retire. You might just have to work until you fucking die, um, you know. So, yeah, I think it's definitely important uh, that regardless of the candidate that we, you know, increase the uh, density of home ownership in this fucking country. That's a for sure. But I mean, I'll, I mean, we could get into so many like rabbit holes right now because the fucking country is so fucking uh, BlackRock and all these investment uh, firms have been buying up all of the homes around this country. Uh, this skyrocketing home value uh now the older people who were able to hold on to their homes uh can no longer afford the property tax on them so lisa was interviewing a lady today who bought, bought her house um you know in the like early 80s and was on the west side of kansas city and up until like three or four years ago it was like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar like regular working class family home uh and then two years later it went up and it was valued at five hundred and forty thousand dollars and the city wants her to pay pro property tax on that and what happens to those people is they fucking lose their homes because who who that uh, spent their whole life living in a house that was valued at 150 grand uh, can now pay four times the amount of property taxes when you're on a fixed income and you're retired. It's, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. And it's one of the many, like, you know, just deeply entangled problems uh, of our country. So I'm excited to see that more candidates are talking about that, even though I'd have to look at the specifics of the RFK uh, J plan. We definitely need to do something to address housing, uh, both at, 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 from a renter level and from a home ownership level in this country. Yeah, 100%. Um, and yeah, I mean, that is a good idea. It is hilarious to me, though, how irrelevant RFK Jr. immediately became as soon as like the GOP primary actually started with the debates and, and all that stuff. Like, it felt like he genuinely had a little bit of momentum. People 
talking about him. He was, you know, making some headlines. And then as soon as the GOP primary started, all of that air just immediately like evaporated. And now he's now, despite the fact that he's, you know, gone around talking about how he's a loyal Democrat for the past however many months now he actually is threatening to run third party and stuff uh, again, because he's not getting any fucking attention anymore. So he's getting desperate and he's like, hey, maybe I will, you know, we're on third party. That'll show him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, then reality, you'll get to start seeing him on Jimmy Dore show again. This is what we've talked yeah. about. <laughs> exactly. When, like I said, he really should have just run as a Democrat or sorry, as a Republican from the beginning, if he wanted to stay relevant, but Anyway, thank you, Chris. That is a good policy. Thanks for letting us know about it. And shout out to you, Zaina. Really appreciate the five bucks. Glad to see you in chat. Dr. West talks to poor white folks. Dor is serving the BS neoliberal dim myth, Southern strategy centrism that caused dims to lose for 30 years. Yeah. No, I think that's a great point. That is a really good point, Zaina. And I genuinely think that most white people, if they heard you know, Cornell West talking about the issues that he talks about. I think they would agree with him. Like we've discussed, he was even able to move Joe frickin Rogan, who, you know, famously uh, discussed his book Race Matters and said, you know, it really moved him and made him cry. I think it really like, you know, gave him a lot of insight that he didn't previously have. That was Cornell West's book, Race Matters. And it spoke to a meathead like Joe fucking Rogan. Um, you're telling me that your average American is dumber and you know more fucking backwards than joe rogan i don't think so i think most americans are probably about you know on that level or they're more evolved they're more that's how he got the biggest podcast in the world he was the average joe of america exactly exactly so i think in the same way a lot of normal you know working class people white people hey what's up tim black how's it going hey what's up yo shout out to you tim black and we did think your joke about us looking like the columbine kids was really funny (laughs) <laughs> yeah dude that actually was genuinely funny even at that was the time, no that was a good banger that was a good banger Shout yeah, out to no, YouTube Black. even at the time when we were pissed off i remember being like all right that was that was a good one um <laughs> anyway uh yeah what was really I appreciate saying? the super chat uh they know and yeah 100 it, it just doubles and triples down jimmy Dore has no idea what he's talking about when it comes to electoral strategy because he he's literally making the like the, the, the case to go after the like dead and gone Southern Dixiecrat like those people do not exist for the Democratic Party to reach anymore. Those are Republican Party voters. Those are Donald Trump supporters. And that's why every and, and that's your entire audience. Right. So he like sees these just deranged Trump sycophants in his comment section saying all this stuff. And I think that in his own warped mind, he still has like a left like third party insurgency audience. So he's like, all oh, these people, they just want to be reached. They, you just, you just, C- Cornell West, Dr. West, sir, all you have to do is just say, hey, racism's not so bad. I've never seen it. Then all these guys are going to vote for you. Come on. Like, just absolutely pathetic. I mean, I could, I, I mean, I can't imagine the shame that you would have to, like, just like, oh, God, the fucking, like, audacity. But anyway, shout out to you, Zaina. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you, Zaina. Always appreciate seeing you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. And shout out to you, Christina. I haven't seen JB in months. Hopefully he's exited RBN. I don't think so. I think he's still sticking it out over there, Christina. Um, and like I said, I, I do I do uh, genuinely think he's like the least unhinged, the like least just craven grifter that's a part of that network. And no, I really like JB. I think that no. JB is a good... Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think he's a, a good guy. I think he's nice and honest and his heart is genuinely in the right place. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think he's exited RBN. I wish he would for his own sake. But, you know, it's easier to say than do to just quit your job. Like I get it. That is his job. Uh, it's hard to just walk away from that. But anyway, shout out to you, Christina. Thank you so much for the 499. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you, Christina. And I think that is about the end of it. I'm going to go get in the shower and take a nap. So I can come back and give you more of these spicy Vanguard hot takes um, in the coming days. But yeah, great show today, Gavin. Yeah, yeah, this was an awesome show. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm glad that you were able to, you know, go live today, Zach, despite your uh, coronavirus rally. Affliction. Yeah, I'm glad we were still able to get this out here because this was a good conversation. I, I really had a lot of fun hanging out with you all today, hearing your opinion on the subject matters. Um, and yeah, shout out to Tim Black, who apparently showed up in our chat. Really been a fan of Tim Black's recent content. I used to watch a lot of Tim Black's content. Yeah, what's up, bro? I used to watch a bunch, uh, but I feel like I haven't seen as much from Tim Black recently. And lately, 
you've absolutely been killing it, bro. Uh, so really appreciate the content from you. Really appreciate your advocacy for Dr. West. And we appreciate the, the comment, man. Oh, yeah. Always, always cool and a little reassuring to see like serious, like, you know, like big time streamers that have been doing this for a long time. Uh, getting in the Vanguard chat, slumming it with us for a, a, for a little bit, you know, <laughs> diving deep into the sewage with the ambulance guard. But anyway, uh, appreciate everybody tuning in today. Uh, massive shout out to the patrons. Uh, we won't forget that this time, like the beginning and end every live stream with a massive shout out to the patron community. You lovely fuckers that keep the lights on here. Uh, keep us uh, primed and ready to go live at a moment's notice uh, through sickness and in health, as I like to say. Uh, really appreciate all of you guys. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to you guys. Hit up that link in the description. Anyone that wants to help us out, support the show for just five bucks a month, you can put your name up there or get your name up there on the shout out screen. Really helps out. It's what makes the show possible. So please hit up that link in the description if you're at all interested or able to help us out and support the show. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Make sure to smash that notification bell so that you don't miss the next show. Zach and I should be back in the future, assuming that Zach recovers from COVID. You know, I'm just I'm sure going to go will. take a bunch of ivermectin. No, I'm not. In case Jeff Bezos is watching. Yeah. Hey, and shout out to you, uh, Tim Black. Stay true to your conviction, guys. It doesn't pay well, but it's honest work. Yo, 100%. I was actually just making that point the uh, earlier, right? About how, like, I would, like, why not just sell out and go beyond, like, you know, MSNBC or do all this? I mean, obviously, like, not that I ever had the fucking out. It wasn't like if MSNBC was banging down my door. It's like, hey, you should come work for us. And No, I'll, I think I'll start a show called The Vanguard with my homie Gavin. But you know what I mean? It's like, why do this? Why why do this every day if you're not gonna like try and fight the good fight? So shout out to you, Tim Black. Really appreciate that. Words of encouragement. Yeah, shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. So glad we squashed the beef with Tim Black. Always been a fan of Tim Black. I never liked the fact that we had that beef. It always that poorly with me. And I'm glad that it seems to be squashed now. So shout out to you, man. Genuinely appreciate it. Well, we've had that. beef with everybody. It's kind of our nature. So I mean, That's you know, true. what goes around comes around. We're, we're, we're prickly pears over here at the Vanguard, but shout out to Tim Black and shout out to everybody else that's put up with us over the years. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tim. Really appreciate that. Let's chat soon at some point if you're interested in it. Um, but yeah, peace out, everyone. We'll catch you guys hopefully tomorrow, maybe the next day, exact day to recover, but we'll be back soon. Peace out, everyone. Look out the door if you hear an ambulance. Now my internet's acting up. We should be good. No. Beep, 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 beep,